for youth and career the first discussion of the day and today we are talking about nurturing the reading culture but before we get into that remember you can interact with us on our social handles that is at y254 across all social media handles and the hashtag to use is why in the morning so for this particular topic nurturing the reading culture we have david njiru who's an author but identifies himself as md and jiru or but he will confirm to me on that he's an author karibu sana david thank you steph okay so how do you i what's your title my my official name is david njiru mm -hmm. But when I'm publishing mm -hmm. or doing any speaking enge engagement, I go by the name M.D. Njiru, the artist. M.D. Njiru, the artist. Yeah. Uh, why, why do you feel the need to, to have a title? Is it for branding? Yeah, for branding purposes. Mm -hmm. And also it explains what I do. Because mm -hmm. I cover out stories both in written and in spoken form. Mm -hmm. So that's why I identify myself as an artist. As an, uh, okay, all yeah. right. So we want to know about the reading culture. Do yeah. I, some people, some of us, um, but at least I am trying with a reading, with a, you know, developing a reading culture. But uh, for most people, once you are done with high school or university or college, depending on the level of education you have reached, that's where your reading actually stops because you're not studying for an exam anymore. Yeah. Most people just read because there's an exam coming up. Yeah. What do you think about that and the reading culture in Kenya? Yeah. So it's because of the approach that we have towards reading. Mm -hmm. And when you are developing the reading culture, okay, I'm from Maktaba Digitari. So Maktaba Digitari, it's all about fun in the reading culture. So at Maktaba Digitari, we do say that you should approach reading as working out. And when it comes to working out, there's this misconception that people have. Mm -hmm. One misconception that people have is that we work out to manage our weight, which is not the case. So you find that someone, if maybe they have achieved the target weight, they don't work out anymore. But we should work out to, for a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. The same applies to reading. We don't read to get information. Because you, information you can get from different sources. You can watch a video, you can listen to an audio book and get the information. We read to exercise the mind. Reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. Okay. So that's why we read. Getting information is a... Added bonus. Yeah. Thank I love that. That's so quite interesting. Reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. And we don't exercise not to, uh, to just build a body or get fit. Yeah. It should be something that goes on yeah, sure. for the benefit, for, yeah. for good health. Yeah. And the same to reading. We don't just read for information because this was the main reason I think I thought uh, was behind yeah. us a reading to get information mm. because we've been told knowledge is power and everything but you've brought again mm. the aspect of people can listen to audiobooks so why mm. should i read yeah. and uh you've given that uh reading is an exercise to the mind sure how so so is it proven scientifically yeah it, <laughs> yeah it's proven scientifically although mm. i want to go into mm -hmm. the scientific part of it it's proven scientifically and also, there are articles out there that have scientifically proved that. And like, let me go back to exercise and nutrition. Mm -hmm. When you take blended juice, you know, there are certain nutrients that are lost, like the fiber, the fiber part. Like it's more healthy to eat a, a fruit than to drink the juice. The same applies to reading. Mm -hmm. You can decide to, to listen to an audio book, which is good because maybe you don't have time, maybe you are driving and you need to, to keep your mind engaged, but that can't substitute reading. Mm -hmm. yeah, so reading itself, there is that, there's that part of reading that, how do I put it? Yeah. There's that part of reading that is like eating a fruit. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. reading is eating the actual fruit, not sure. taking the juice. Yeah, yeah that's okay. the point. Yeah. This is interesting, and I love how you bring out mm. the, uh, you, uh, um, what do you call it? 
you bring in a new concept to familiarize uh, an this analogy yeah analogy yeah. the yeah. analogy is the yeah. word yeah. so what are some of the things that we benefit uh, apart from now exercising our brain why how would you tell someone how would you convince someone to to read because they need to apart from they need to exercise their brain or what benefits comes with exercising your okay. brain so first i would start with the why what's the why mm -hmm. you know someone once said that when the why is strong enough the how falls into place so once you identify the why for reading the how which is how do you approach reading how do you plan for it it will fall into place so yeah. what's the why so the first why is that i've said that reading is is an, an exercise, exercise. Mm -hmm. then something else about reading reading is in depth mm -hmm. for example if you watch a movie mm -hmm. if there is a story version and there is if if there is a movie version of a story and a book version of the of the same the book there is more depth to it mm -hmm. so you get more depth you get mm -hmm. then another reason for reading is because you know sometime back during uh, our forefathers time people used to to run through apprenticeship but that culture it's normal mm -hmm. so nowadays you run through mentorship and such kind of of stuff mm -hmm. so but you find that if you want someone maybe to mentor you they're not there always for you but if you can pick books written by people who are doing what you are planning to do you get that in-depth mentorship Mm -hmm. So that's another reason for for, for read, read yeah. yeah to read yeah. And I've actually had many people say yes, but this is on novels <laughs> most okay. of the time which yeah. will bring another question mm. uh, saying that the th the you know the imagination created when you read is mm. different from watching a movie it misses out on some of the things mm. that you feel or you you know the picture that you paint when you mm. actually read so this is actually true yeah it's very true all right and let me uh, add something mm. although that's a bit of topic i was watching a certain podcast and someone was saying that mm -hmm. some years back if you had a song you didn't the, the song had to to be really good for it to sell but nowadays if but nowadays if if you have a song but nowadays if you have a, if you have a song but it's mm -hmm. not really good you can bring in vixens who can make the song to sell the same applies to to books mm -hmm. if a book is not well written it will not sell but for a movie a movie can sell even if the story is not well executed mm -hmm. yeah there are other aspects to the to the story that can make the movie sell but for for reading the the story has to be the story has to be well written so mm -hmm. that's why reading is more captivating okay. it, it engages the mind more you have to imagine okay yeah. and now uh, this has brought me to the to the question on the content because yeah. people read diverse things so sure. we say you should have a good reading culture some read comic books some read novels some mm. read uh, you know different things uh, mm. educational material inspirational books so what is the right uh, material to invest yourself in reading thank you so there's no right material so the first step starts with developing that culture mm -hmm. then from there now you 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 chant a path mm -hmm. you know so you read based on there's what you call intentional reading mm -hmm. you read based on you read based on what you you are looking for for example mm -hmm. right now I, i will not read any book about how to how to become rich okay or how to become wealthy right now i will read a book explaining the science behind it how okay. how to become wealthy you the won't read a book on how to become wealthy but the science behind the, uh, it the science behind it so it depends on what level you are in your reading in your reading journey also something else about reading mm -hmm. 
there's something that is called the writer's block. People know about the writer's block, whereby mm -hmm. you can't write anymore if you are an author. A writer, yeah. yeah. But also we have a reader's block, mm -hmm. you know, whereby you can't progress in your reading. You have plateaued. The same way with working out, there's a place that reaches and you, your body doesn't change, mm -hmm. regardless of how much you work out. So you have to read different genres for you to spice up your reading. Okay. So you, you can read today comic, then after three months of reading comic, you can decide to switch to inspirational, mm -hmm. then you, you switch to memoirs and, you know, yeah. Okay. What would you attribute to the poor reading culture that is there? So the poor reading culture will be attributed to the notion that we have reading, we need to get information. That's why after school, be it high school, be it college, be it the university, people are like, I don't need this, I don't need to read anymore. Like, I already have the information. Maybe, you, are, you know, in school you are reading to pass the exams. And that's mm -hmm. what has been instilled in us. So once you pass the exams and you're out of school, you feel like you don't need, need to read anymore. But isn't mm. reading to get information also a good reason to, to read? Because we, the, we, uh, we, or it is said that, y you know, there's no end to getting knowledge. It's not a good reason to read. Because mm -hmm. that information can be, can be received from different sources. Okay. Yeah, so the primary reason for reading should be exercising the mind. So that one will keep you reading. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about those who read to just, because some people say they have a problem with the uh, fluency mm. while speaking, mm. especially maybe English. Yeah. So they read to get uh, a good grounding mm. in that area. Yeah. So is that a good reason to read? Yeah, that's also a good reason to read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the reason should be deeper. Because after you start getting the fluency, you may tend to, mm. to be like, ah, now I've already gotten the fluency, you tend to relax. Okay, so yeah. I'm, I'm getting mm. the point that mm. any reason is okay, is, mm. or it's fine, mm. but the main reason mm. should actually just be exercising your brain, mm. and that will keep you grounded mm. in the culture. Yeah, and you, uh, yeah, and you get a deeper, a deeper reason. A deeper reason that will make you continue reading even after you have achieved those short-term goals. So is the deeper reason now exercising your brain or is there another deeper reason? Okay, I think uh, a, a universal reason will be to exercise the mind. Mm -hmm. But now you can customize your own deeper reason. You can come up with your custom-made so reason. examples of such because I've mentioned you know improving your language and yeah. you've said that's a good reason but not strong enough I've said getting information yeah. you've said it's not a good reason mm. so what other reason you know are there that can be deeper you know for an individual okay like for example for for me currently I've decided to to make it a way of life mm -hmm. so as long as I'm living I will read Okay, yeah. that's quite a deep, a deep reason to have. Yeah. So as long as you're reading, you, as long as you're alive, you're reading. The yeah. same way as long as you're alive, you're eating and yeah. you're drinking. Yeah. And so it's, a, it's part of, of yeah. your life. Yeah. So tell us now, how do we develop that culture? But for someone who, has, who doesn't love reading, who doesn't have that culture, and they want to start for one reason or another. So how do you develop that culture? Okay, thank you. So number one, you... We have said you find the reason. Mm -hmm. Then after the reason, having a reason, mm -hmm. you decide. You know? Mm -hmm. Alexander Porter once stated that it's not getting what you want that's the hardest part. It is deciding. Mm -hmm. So that means, to paraphrase that, it means that you can get whatever you want if you decide. So most of the people don't, who don't read it's because they have not decided. It's not that someone mm -hmm. is too busy or anything. It's not that they have not decided. So the first step is deciding. Mm -hmm. Once you decide, then things will fall into place. Once you decide, the how will fall into place. Then from there, you, you approach reading like working out. Mm -hmm. So with workout, one, usually allocate time, usually schedule. Mm -hmm. So you schedule. 
Yeah, it, you can say to read in the morning, you can say to read in the evening. Is there a time more suitable than another? Okay, it, it goes with your, it's go, it goes with an individual, you know? Like, let, give, let me give an example with myself. I usually read from my bed. And, for example, if I decide to read in the morning, mm -hmm. I will fall asleep, like, yeah, because yeah. I was I'm yeah. thinking in the bed, you know, <laughs> sleep yeah. will just come automatically. Yeah. Um, so I usually read at night so that when I fall asleep... Oh, it's I, okay I, to I, it's, sleep. It's up to, <laughs> to morning. So you, you just look at what works for you. Then also like working out, you, you start small. Mm -hmm. You start small. Like Brucey once stated that long-term consistency trumps short-term intensity. So just start small and build up. You can say to read 10 minutes a day, every day or thrice a week, mm -hmm. but long term for life, you know, it's a lifestyle. So start small, then build up. Then another thing also is that you should set goals. You should have reading goals. Mm -hmm. Like you can say maybe I'll read a book a week, a book a month, you know, mm -hmm. but there should be goals that they are manageable, that you not be, you not burn out. Also, something else, just like workout, you should make reading interesting, you know. How do you make it interesting? Okay, you see, when people go for workout, maybe running, maybe to the gym, they usually add music to it and all that. So if music works for you, you can say, well, you are reading, you can play some smooth background music to make it more interesting. Okay. Yeah. Then something else that I'll add, mm -hmm. to avoid what you call leaders broke, you know, the same way with the exercise. When you do the same exercise routine. Daily. Yeah, daily, daily. You plateau. So to avoid that, you also change your general after a period of time. So if, for example, you're reading memoirs, for a period of time, you change and you start reading maybe fictional books, you know, yeah. Okay, mm. and uh, when you're reading, mm. should you like take down notes or something? Is it something that you can do while reading? Yeah, you should, you, sh you should. Mm. You should, also it also depends from which platform are you reading. Reading from. from. No. For example, if you're reading a PDF, from your phone, you can just screenshot the, you can highlight the something and screenshot it. Like, I have a collection of screenshots that I review mm -hmm. once I'm done reading. Okay. So you can write, you can screenshot, you know. Okay, yeah. and we'll talk about uh, the review bits in, mm. in, a, in a little while. What about the location? You've said you read in your bed mm. and that's uh, fine with you. Mm. But what about, you know, I've had a lot of people reading in a calm environment, somewhere where there's, you know, the nature is green, you know, some mm. where you have some zeal. <laughs> mm. Is it uh, a contributing factor, the location, the place you're reading? Does it enhance or boost uh, your reading culture? Yeah, the location is very important. Yeah, it should be some uh, place that is conducive for reading. And also still on the location, you, we should focus also on the reading posture or position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what should be the right posture? There's no right posture. For example, let's say someone who spends most of their day seated, like maybe working in an office, like in this kind of setup, maybe mm -hmm. seated like this. Yeah. It would be unfair to spend the whole day seated. Then in the evening, you go to read seated. You know? Like, yeah. usually I spend most of my day seated. So that's why I read the way lying down. So okay. find something that works out for you. Find a posture that works out for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. And now about uh, reviews. You do mm. reviews apart from being an author. Yeah. Do they boost some, or do they attract the interest of uh, people? Uh, to read a certain book? Yeah, they usually, they usually, yeah, they usually attract the, the interest. So most of the time when, most of the time when we, 
when we pick a book, sometimes we pick a book because we had it been mentioned by someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, I once had Les Brown, who is a motivation speaker, mm -hmm. mention about a book called University of Success by Og Mandino. So once I had him mention that book and I usually take Les Brown in high regard, I went and picked that book. So I also do that with, with my blog and my channel. I usually tend review books so that someone can go and pick that book. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of reviewing a book is to intrigue someone to go and pick that book. Okay. Yeah. So if someone is looking for a book to read, they should probably look for good reviews of a book and then that will help in the reading because it will be something they're interested to. Yeah. Mm, sorry. Yeah, they they should they should look at reviews mm -hmm. and also they should ask themselves this question. Where are you? Where are you at at this particular moment in your life? Mm -hmm. You know? We as humans are dealing with different things at different period of time. Mm -hmm. You know? So and there is a book about almost everything. Even there's a book about how to read slowly. <laughs> Not just reading, but how, how to read, read slowly. How to read slowly. Hmm. Like right now, I'm reading a book called The War of Art. I, I think that, that, that title was born from the art of war. They interchanged hmm. the, the words. So the book is called The War of Art. So at this point, I felt that my, my creativity is taking a nose dive. And I, need, I needed to revive it a bit. So I picked that book based on where I am at that moment. So, so apart from reviews, you also look at mm -hmm. where are you at. That particular moment. Yeah, sure. And what is it about uh, the high and mighty or the wealthy mm -hmm. with, you know, reading books? Because you, you, you get them in the book clubs and, uh, you know, giving uh, reviews about books like you do. Mm -hmm. So what is it about, about that? Maybe that will be captivating for someone who doesn't love reading books. Yeah, so we, we all have that aspiration to be wealthy and mighty, as you have put mm. it. And one of the things that most of the wealthy people do is that they usually exercise, you know, they meditate, and also they read, you know. So it's because they know reading is an exercise to the mind, you know. So that's why they read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why they read. So they know the yeah, secret. The secret to reading. Okay. Something else that I would explain about reading, once your mind is fit, what, once your mind is, you're in the right state of mind, you can handle almost anything. Mm. Like Nelson Mandela spent 27 years in prison, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things when you read Nelson Mandela's autobiography, you realize that he was doing used to exercise while at prison, and also used to read a lot. So I think those two things kept him going. Mm -hmm. Exercise yeah. of the body and exercise of the mind sure. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay, what about uh, being in a book club? Does that help? Yeah. And yeah. how should you identify a, a book club that you, you know, to go to? Yeah, it definitely helps because you have people to cheer you up, you know, we are usually told that if you want to to go faster, walk alone. If you want to go far, walk with people. So when you're in a book club, you know, when, you, you have people to cheer you up. Mm -hmm. You know, there are times like, it's like, let me also go back to working out. If you, are, you, if you have a workout body, that is that you feel like you don't want to work out, but the workout body will cheer you up, will hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. So the same applies with the book club. Okay, yeah. and it makes reading a, a little bit of fun. Yeah, it, it also makes reading fun. Sure. So how do you identify uh, a right book club to go to? So first you, 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 you identify by people you have the same interest mm -hmm. with, you okay. know? Yeah, same interest with, because you've mentioned about fun. So mm -hmm. if you have the same interest, it will be much easier. Mm -hmm. yeah. And finally, before we go into mm. the books that you have written and the current mm. one, mm. whose responsibility is it uh, to ensure that you have 
our reading culture? Is it the parents that are supposed to nurture it when the child grows? Is it you as a person when you realize the importance of uh, having a good reading culture? Or is it maybe the government or the society, you know, many people? <laughs> yeah, so it's, at a, pa parents have a role to play. Parents have a role to play. Like in some countries like Finland, there's that culture of parents reading for, for the children, you know? And once the parents go for clinics, they take children to clinics and all that, they're given even books, you know? Mm -hmm. to, uh, to encourage them to read to their kids and all that. So parents have a role to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also the government have a role to play and it has played a good role because we have the Kenya National Library. Some, I will mention something about the Kenya National Library. Mm -hmm. Like with 20 shillings, you can access the Kenya National Library and spend the whole day there reading mm -hmm. and you have access to free internet. You know? Okay. Then the biggest responsibility raised with you as a person, especially if you're an adult. It's mm -hmm. your responsibility. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now let's talk about the book that you have written. And mm. I would like to just uh, read, uh, sorry, let me read the dedication and also um, the conclusion of it before you talk about it. The book is called A Kachumbari of Kenyan. Quite an interesting uh, title for mm. a book. You also tell us about this. And uh, the declaration, uh, sorry, the dedication that he has given that is to all Kenyans. Not all book, books have a dedication to every Kenyan there. I'm having some trouble getting it just a little bit. Maybe you can tell us about the title as I look for the dedication. What, what, what inspired you or what, you know, brought you to come to the conclusion that the title should be Akachumbari of Kenyan. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So when I was writing this book, when I was writing this book, I was working on a different project and I happened to listen to a podcast. Mm -hmm. That podcast is called Ikonini by Moaf and Zach. There was this guest, he's an artist, he's called DNA, Mr. Dreams. She was talking about that the problem that we have in Kenya is that our stars are politicians, mm -hmm. not rappers, not business personalities, not sports personalities, but politicians. And it hit me like, wait a minute, why not write a book and celebrate sports, everybody now, and also include even the politicians. So I started writing the, mm -hmm. the book. So when I started, when I started writing the book, I I've mixed all those people there. Okay. So, and it don't to me like, you know, with, kachum with kachumbari, ikona nyanya kitungu and everything. So mm, this is the kachumbari. Kafirifiri. Yeah, in the yeah. kafirifiri. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then, uh, then something else uh, that hit me was that most Kenyans love smokies. Na unakura kachumbari, unakuranga smokies na kachumbari. Yeah. So that's why they tell you kona, kona the word smokies kiteremuka. Because... Uh -huh. And we'll have mm. it projected in yeah. the sc on the screen. Brenda, you can have the, uh, the cover page projected there. So we can see the smokies where S represents slogans. Yeah. M represents mottos, taglines, and O uh, stands for original quotes made in K which is Kenya or by a Kenyan, I in each and uh, E every S space. Mm -hmm. I hope you've uh, gotten to understand it, but you, once you see it, you will get uh, the concepts behind it. So tell us about the Smoky. Yeah. So basically it's a book celebrating Kenyans. Uh -huh. And I wrote the book during the election period. And we are still, we are still in the election period because today the Supreme Court will be giving the verdict. Mm -hmm. So I wrote it at a time when I felt that I need to celebrate all Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And also rally the Kenyan spirit. You know, there's more to Kenya than politics. So... You, uh, you, you felt the need to mm -hmm. make sure you, 
you pass it pass the message on that mm. the Kenyan spirit is strong and that yeah. peace should be there yeah, sure. just to remind us of who we are yeah, and that's a, that's amazing mm. so I, i'm getting that the book is you know a collection of s slogans made by Kenyans a collection of mottos and taglines and quotes so uh, why 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 did you decide to use to use this okay so i, I can see the inspiration came from from that interview that I watched, mm -hmm. when DNA said that our stars are usually politicians, not sp sports personalities, not business people. So that's where the inspiration came from. Yeah. Okay, so we'll have it on the screen. The producer has said it is ready. There we have it. We have the slogans, mottos, and taglines, all for original quotes made in Kenya or by a Kenyan in each and every space. Yeah. So what message, for someone who has not read this, what message uh, is the, what is the underlying message in this whole book? So the underlying message in this whole book is to rally the Kenyan spirit. You can see the cover page mm -hmm. has that. Kenyan flag. Uh, uh, that Kenyan touch, yeah. The mm -hmm. Kenyan flag mm -hmm. and the Kenyan map. You All see? right. Ah, yeah. the Kenyan map, yeah. yes. Yeah. The background image. Yeah. So Amazing. It, yeah, so it's, it's basically to rally the mm. Kenyan spirit. Okay, yeah. and I'll read the dedication because yeah. it's to all Kenyans, mm. which is us, of course. Our fellow Kenyans, this book is dedicated to all Kenyans. The Kenyans who lived before us, everyone who lives in Kenya, the Kenyans outside Kenya, the Kenyans who will come after us, anyone with a trace of Kenyan in them, wherever they are, any person who has ever visited Kenya, any person who will visit Kenya in the future and any person wherever they are who has the spirit of resilience because that is the Kenyan DNA. I love it. I love it. And uh, just to get the conclusion because it's also uh, quite nice. It says, fellow Kenyans, our enemies are poverty, ignorance and diseases. We have... Uh, we already have resilience and have always been resilient. We are unbowed. Politics are part of us, but we shouldn't let politics breed hatred, discord, discord and negative ethnicity. Remember what Kuali uh, Bifoli once said, Sisi wana siyasani kama masietani. Yeah. So kama ma... So kama mandago, usiweke mambo ya siyasa kwa roho tafadhali. Weka kwa lungs. Hiyo ndio kipumua tu. <laughs> ndio kipumua tu after elections. Few inakuenda. It is time we rise na kama scouts to a tayari to take this nation to greater levels. Like St. Lucy School uh, for the Blind, let us all strive for excellence. This will require us to be eagles like Odayo Boys High School and not hens. Remember, Pastor Magogo uh, said, Kuzaliwa tu Kenya ni form six. Our dreams are valid, Lupita attested, and we are not limited. Keep Choge proved. Like NYS, let us be true to self, true to country. True. Amazing, and I've seen you've you, I've seen you've used quotes from uh, Lupita, from leaders there, just to to give a conclusion to everything that yeah. you have written yeah. up there. Yeah. Okay, this is amazing. So, what what are you telling Kenyans today as we wait for the Supreme Court verdict being in line with you know the book that you have written today? Yeah. So maybe I'll mention something about the conclusion first. Mm -hmm. So. Like I've mentioned St. Lucy School for the Brind, I've mentioned to their boys. Mm -hmm. I've mentioned the scout there, Lupita, Kipchoge. Mm -hmm. I've mentioned about Mandago. Okay, when you read the book, you'll, you'll be able to appreciate the, the conclusion. So okay. once you read the book, you'll be able to appreci appreciate the conclusion. Mm -hmm. The book is informative, educative, hilarious, and all that. So the message that I have for Kenyans as we wait for the Supreme Court verdict mm -hmm. is that no matter the outcome, is that we should embrace the Kenyan spirit, you know, and we should just be peaceful. You know, our forefathers, the forefathers of this nation, they stated that our enemies are poverty, ignorance, and diseases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
those three things ndio adu yetu adu yetu sio mtu mwenyako the other side just because somebody supported Kenya Kwanza ama mwingine ali support Azimio yes you adu yako adu yako ni poverty ignorance and disease okay yeah so we should embrace peace just one thing before mm. we come to a close mm. there's something that you mentioned in one of your vlogs and mm. you uh, quoted Robert Kiyosaki and he said the focus is not on best written books but on best selling books yeah. elaborate on this so you can have a well written book mm -hmm. but if the book is not out there you know nobody will know about the book so the focus is on the selling part you can have great products but if the products are not sold you know even the company will collapse so the focus is usually on sales so yeah okay so yeah. for someone when you're buying a book should you look for the best selling books or should you just look for a book that looks captivating enough for your interest so you know a book is captivating because it's out there Oh. Yeah, you know that it's been the book. Out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you for this. Uh, what is your final word mm. as we come to a close and where can people get you on your social handles and for those who want to purchase your book? This mm. is your camera. Okay. So thank you very much Steph and thank you to our viewers. So my social handles are Maktaba Digitali across all social media platforms. And this book is on Amazon. You can buy it from Amazon. Also, you can reach me on WhatsApp. Yeah, I can give me a number. Sure, it's okay. your number. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> okay, so you can reach me on WhatsApp. That is 0732 274 116. And I can direct you on how you get the book. Steph, maybe you can add something? Sure. Okay. So once I was read, writing this book, this book gave birth to twin books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, in in each and every space. So the, that part of every space, I sampled mm -hmm. messages from Kenyans from across all spaces. Mm -hmm. And at one point, I had to go to Langata Cemetery, you know, mm -hmm. to correct the epitaphs. You the, did? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but that was an afterthought. I was like, should I really do this? But yeah. I was like, okay, there are also Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those people that are, there are also Kenyans or they are buried in Kenya. So mm -hmm. let me go and correct the epitaphs. So I corrected the epitaphs. So the first time I, I corrected, I went with, the, with four full scraps mm -hmm. and Nikandi Kaizo V2. Then creativity took a life of its own. And I, realized, and I realized that it's not only a segment in the book, it can be a book on its own. So I buy even an A4 book, 200 pages, I can write a Peter Fzote, and I can write two more books. Mm -hmm. So from this book, we have two more books. Okay, which ones? The book, we have Feeding from the Cemetery, and we have Feeding from the Cemetery, Bible Beast. Because those epitaphs zilikuwa mingi, nikona, they fall under two categories. Some are scripture-based, others are just ordinary epitaphs. Mm -hmm. You know? So, nika divide into two. Then, something else, maybe the title sounds a bit spooky, feeding from the yeah, cemetery. Yeah, you know, feeding from the cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds, you know, <laughs> yeah. a bit spooky as you have said, yeah? Yeah. So, mm. even when you go online, utapata articles written about, like, you know, people should not be buried in the U.S. of public land. Yeah. People should just be criminated and all that. And I was like, why not prove the naysayers wrong? You know, the cemetery actually can feed us. How? Th through the messages that are written on the epitaph. Like one cemetery that mm. I visited, ah, like one grave that I visited, at that time when I was visiting that place, you know, we were still living. Mm -hmm. Na... Sometimes we have worries. Nakumka nienda grave moja iko imeandikwa aje. Why worry about the hills when you have mountains to climb? You know, and mm. it talked to me, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, this is a powerful message. So 
that feeding from the cemetery, the, the first book, the proceeds from that book mm -hmm. will go to, to a feeding program. I'm not getting, I'm not even pick a cent from the book. Nikama pay, you know, with pay, mm. it's deducted from the source. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so the proceeds go to a feeding program. Yeah. Why? Because it's feeding from the cemetery. Oh, feeding from, aha, uh -huh, okay. So yeah. you are doing it in, you're, it's actually, you are manifesting it or you, you are literally yeah. doing uh, that yeah. which yeah. you've written, feeding yeah. from the cemetery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and only only the viewer can give the power to to that idea. You know, if someone doesn't buy that book, will not be able to feed from the cemetery. But if someone buys that book, and details on how they can they can send money to the feeding program directly. So you'll feed the message, you'll feed from the message, and also you'll feed the from mm -hmm. you'll feed a kid from the cemetery. Okay. Also, there's the scripture-based Bible, uh, the scripture-based book. The message, mm -hmm. the, sorry, the proceeds, 100% of the proceeds will go to BTL, that is Bible Translation and Literacy. But BTL is doing an amazing work to translate the Bible into our native local languages. So once you purchase that book, the proceeds, they go directly. At when you kwa BTL, when I verify the payment, I send the book to you. So once you pay to BTL, mm -hmm. no, no. After sa BTL wa, wa translate, the, the, they continue translating the, the Bible into the local languages. No, no, to me feed from the cemetery. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is a qu a quite the concept that you yeah. have come up with. Yeah. All right, so you want to tell people, uh, or maybe they can get that when they get to your socials? Yeah, so once you WhatsApp me on 0732 mm. 274 116, yeah, I'll give you the payment All details. All the details. Yeah. Amazing. Thank yeah. you very much for coming on board yeah. and sharing with us uh, your. Uh, knowledge on in this area on the reading culture. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, that has been David Njiru, who's an author, talking to us about nurturing the reading culture on uh, youth and careers. So we're going to take a short break after this, and then Sakwa, Brand Sakwa, will be back with MCM. So don't go too far. The hashtag is still Why in the Morning. See you on the other side.